setting new standards in podcast excellence. You have joined the WBT, fully focused on business and taxes. Here is your host, Michael Lodge. And here we are again. This is Michael Lodge, and welcome to the WBT. I'm glad that you joined me. Today we're going to be talking about making smart decisions on people that surround you. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. So here we are another day, another discussion, another talk, another whatever you want to call it, another podcast. Several years ago, I had a, um, I had a uh, tax client who was probably, I would probably rate him financially as the second top boxer in the world. And this is what I notice so much about boxers, especially this boxer is that they focused so much on their physical well-being. They were strategizing. They were thinking about how they were going to fight in that ring. They were thinking about the promotions that they were going to do. They were thinking about the contracts that they were going to enter into. And they would go into the training facilities and they would train every single day and then in early in the morning and then the evening they would get on the trails and they would run and they would jog and they would do all of the exercise training that they needed to do to prepare for this big fight because it was worth a lot of money and so they would get up early and they'd start running and they would have a whole posse around them, a whole group of people that was always surrounding the boxer. I often wondered, how does he even focus with all these people around him, all wanting something from him? They wanted to get into a business deal with him. They wanted him to buy something from, from them. They wanted to get free money. I mean, it was a whole host of nonsense but he trusted his financial side to an individual who had no training in finances whatsoever and then the people that surrounded him were always at him telling him hey you should do this you should do use this company you should invest in this you could do everybody was surrounding him telling him to do all this stuff because they were going to get something at the end. It's a dirty business, I tell you. Boxing is dirty, dirty, dirty. When it comes to the promoters and to the, to the sponsors and to the networks and everything, and even the boxers and the people that surround the boxers, it's a very dirty business. I've seen it firsthand. I felt it firsthand. I don't ever want to see it again. That's how bad it was. Now, my job was to advise him on taxes, but do you think that he would listen? No. He would go off onto another direction and listen to everybody around him. Now, here's, here's the key to this whole conversation that you and I are having is that he was so focused and so good at getting ready for his fights and winning his fights. The problem is, is that his finances, he was really bad at. He was giving away so much of his income that by the end, he had very little left. And this is the story of almost every boxer. Uh, There's only one boxer that I know who has really managed their money well and who has invested well, and that's that's, uh, Mayweather. Mayweather has done extremely well. Because he has a team around him that advise him on what he should do with his money. Now, the team around him are also professionals. They're CPAs, they're advisors, they're money people, they're money management people, they're good negotiators. If you look at his arrangement with Hammond, 
I mean, it, he it, the top of the line, top of the line. But the problem with other boxers is that they are street smart, but dumb when it comes to managing their financial situation. They're very bad stewards at managing their finances. And they get the wrong people around them that tell them what to do, but they have no idea what they're telling them. They don't have the experience. They don't have the knowledge. They're just going by what somebody else has told them to get to the boxer and get his money. We have to be very careful about those individuals that we surround ourselves with. Boxer, accountant, engineer, whoever you are. Don't rely on your street smarts to get you through. Make sure that you have the right individuals around you who are going to advise you. Either you get a business coach or you get a business advisor or a good accountant. But make sure that they have that chutzpah to know what to do. The most important individual that you can surround yourself with are two two, two people, really. Basically, your accountant and your tax guy and and a good attorney. (laughs) Because when you're in the boxing world, you're going to be sued by every hairy Every dick, Harry Mo, every schmo, they're going to be surrounding you and they're going to be suing you for every dollar that you have. And you're going to spend more in litigation costs because you don't have the right people around you to protect you and protect your money. Well, the same thing with us, you and I, who sit out here in our everyday world, doing our everyday thing, trying to survive every moment of the day, trying to start businesses, if we do not hire the right coaches and the right financial advisors and the right attorneys to advise you on legal issues, you are going to be throwing money out the window just like a boxer. I've seen it happen so many times. But I'm always happy when I have an individual come in and they say, Mike, What do I do? How do I do this in my business? How do I manage this? And and how do I streamline operations? And how do I handle my HR issues? And they're asking the questions. And the most important part of everything in managing a business or managing your money is asking questions. If you're not asking questions and you've been silenced, then it's what the old silent, what the, what the old, The verbiage that they always say is silence is deadly. Because if you don't ask the questions, then you're not going to know what to do with your money. And you're not going to know who to surround yourself with who are going to give you the right advice and not the advice just to make money off of you. That's why I I get so pissed off when I hear people saying, oh, I just bought a whole life policy. Why? Why did you buy a whole life policy? Well, because my cousin told me about this other person that said he could make me some money. That's the most stupid and the most dumb thing that you can possibly do. For one thing, whole life is going to cost you a bunch of money. If you were to do term life, sat down and looked at all of your expenses at the time that you think you're going to die. Make sure everything is covered. Make sure that your children are covered. Make sure your wife is okay. Making sure that the house is paid off. Making You have to know what dollars you're going to have to spend in order to take care of everything when you perish. Not go by what somebody tells you, hey, buy this whole life thing. No, buy term life. Plan it out. If you've got millions of dollars to waste, then we'll talk about whole life. But right now, just punch into term life because that's going to be the cheapest and the safest for you to be able to prepare for your children and your family and even sometimes even if you for your business because you've got to make sure that you've got to have insurance in place to take care of when you pass away that money goes to the business and takes care of all of the expenses and everything to either sell it or to shut it down but it's this whole thought process that 
boxers do not think about because they want to see the bling and they want to see the Ferraris and they want to see the Rolexes and they want to see the, the first class trips and the, and uh, the leasing of a Learjet and buying a home for X, Y, and Z family members. But they don't think about their own financial needs, their own fiscal responsibility to themselves. And that's the sad part. When you're making millions and millions of dollars and by the end of your career, everything's gone sad. So the same thing with us, we normal individuals that are going to our office every single day and working with our clients and working with our bosses, you and I, we have a responsibility too to surround ourselves with the right financial advisors and not a friend of a friend or a cousin or a family member. Hire, I always tell my clients, have a have an arm's length relationship with your financial advisor so that you can make independent decisions and they can make independent decisions on you. That's the way life works in business. We're not supposed to be all huggy and uh, hold hands and sing kumbaya. No, we are supposed to manage our money like a real business and do it very well. And surround ourselves with the people who know what they're doing. That's why I say get a business coach. Get a business coach that has the, if you're in business, get a business coach that has a broad amount of experience and has been through it before, and who has handled it before on their own so that they can advise you on what to do. Don't hire someone that's gone to school and gone to coaching school. That that doesn't cut it. That is not a business coach. <laughs> that is a wannabe business coach. Has no experience or background to guide you through what to do at startup, what you need to do to get it in compliance with various laws and the state and federal governments and local municipalities and what to do to hire individuals and independent. It goes on and on. If they've never been through it before and have never gone through what the hardest, hardest moments in business is about and lived through it, they're not going to be able to advise you very much on everything, on anything. If they haven't been in the corporate world and gone through HR and the complexities of HR and the advancement of yourself into a corporation, they will never be able to advise you because they do not have hands-on experience. So that's what I'm saying is that who you hire to surround yourself with, make sure that they have the experience level to help you along the way. Experience counts. Reading a book and getting a certificate on the wall does not count. I'm sorry. But it's that hands-on daily experience that an individual has had that can advise you the best because he's been or she has been through it with her own business, with her own company. That's how it is. That's how life is. So, if you're going to be a good manager of your own life, surround yourself with the best people. If you need help, call me at 888-681-1518 or send me an email at mlodge at lodge-co.com. Go to my website, www.lodge-co.com. Look, click on it and see what we can do for you. We can do a whole bunch. Call me and let me know if you need any help. But remember, find yourself, take an example from boxers and how they go broke at the end because they do not surround themselves with the right people who can advise them. Be picky. This is Mike Lodge. I'll talk with you very soon. Have a great day.
Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs. This is brought to you by Lodge Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge Co., your source for sound business and tax services. Thank you.